services. So we pray that you found us today. Uh, if not, you can find us on Facebook. The archive services are kept on the website. So I encourage you, if you miss it, to uh, log in to that and uh, watch it there. Uh, let me tell you, um, you look around the church here and the pews are empty and we, we just miss being together and we look forward to that time that we'll be back together and be able to fellowship together. Uh, it's just, um, I know the uncertainty and the, it's hard right now, but uh, so thankful the technology is able to keep us somewhat connected and uh, we want you to know that uh, we love you and that we miss you so much. Uh, appreciate all the work that's still going on. Uh, Brother Ron Gillespie, he fixed the bathroom doors this week, so when you get back you'll see those. We've got pocket doors going into the bathrooms now. Um, Ruth started something this morning with the Sunday school, the kids Sunday school. Uh, Christ Mighty Power Rangers, if your kids uh, miss that, it will be saved on our Facebook Live page. So I encourage you to, to watch that. And this week, the 252 Kids Studio for Children's Church, if you uh, want to take advantage of that with your kids, a lot of things on there to do. Uh, the instructions for that is in one of the posts. There's a video post about that telling you how to do that. Uh, and this week will be week five. So I encourage you to do that with your kids. Uh, things still going on at the church. Grief share, uh, 5:30 on Tuesday nights. Uh, if you want to be, a, if you're a part of that, we encourage you to to keep coming and being a part of that. Ladies Bible study, uh, Fridays evening, uh, still here at the church. I know this last time uh, we didn't have anybody come, but she went. She did it live from her house. So appreciate Ruth all the work that she's doing. Uh, online services is still there. Sunday night will uh, be on there. Wednesday night. Uh, always Sunday morning, uh, the traditional and restart services, so uh, don't miss those. And if, uh, if you're not getting text or the dial, from dial my calls from the church, uh, let us know. I know we have 114 signed up for that, uh, but if you're not, Bob or Alan, they send out messages every week, so if you're not getting anything, be sure and call the church and let one of us know and we'll get you plug back in for that. Emails the same way. We send out emails every week. Uh, if you're not getting the emails, check your spam folder. Um, but the, the emails are still going out. Uh, this Wednesday at 7.30, uh, there will be youth f online. So if you want to be a part of that, uh, get in touch with Brother Allen or Josh. They're going to use Zoom. So you'll be able to see all your buddies in that uh, meeting with them that night. So encourage you to be a part of that. That's Wednesday night at 7.30. Um, we've had some questions about uh, uh, tithing. Um, you can mail it. You can bring it by the church if somebody's here. And after Tuesday, we'll, we've had a couple people say, you know, they want to be able to drop it off. We'll have a drop box outside under the awning, uh, maybe a little metal box on the wall if you want to drop it off there. And we have online giving available on the church app. And on the website, it's on the left-hand side on one of the buttons there. You just It's a one-time sign-up, and then uh, you can use that if, if you want to. Uh, so many things. Uh, we look forward to today. Uh, I know we're not together physically, but as a church, we'll meet, and we'll break bread, and we'll uh, hear Brother Bob and Brother Allen preach the word. And uh, so appreciate them for the work that they do each week. Uh, birthdays and anniversaries, we have quite a few this week. Um, do the anniversaries first. On the 31st, Brother uh, Bill and Sister Keela Mead um, wish them a happy anniversary this week. Uh, birthdays on the 30th, uh, Sister Sue Lester on the 3rd, Dan Van Dyke. Also on the 3rd, Jake Honeaker. All on the 3rd. On the 3rd, Morgan Connor. And also on the 3rd, Sister Keisha Davis. So we wish you guys uh, a happy birthday this week. Um, we'll have uh, Sister uh, Trish and Kristen and Brother Tom, they'll be leading a couple songs uh, for the services today, but let's open with prayer today if we will. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time that we can be together. Uh, as we said, we know we're not physically together, but as your church, we're meeting, we're worshiping you, Father. We love you so much, and uh, during this uh, uncertain time and the times that we live in, Father, we just pray that you'll uh, calm people's fears and that uh, we'll look to you and trust you, Father, because we know that you're still God. And, uh, you've got it in your hands. And Father, we just love you today. We lift you up. Uh, we pray everyone will be encouraged. And we just can't wait to break your word and hear from it, Father, and hear the message of the day. And Father, we pray that we'll apply it to our lives and that we'll serve you in such a mighty way, Father. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.
tuning in to the uh, services today, and uh, we just uh, praise God for the opportunity that He gives us to be together. The Bible says, where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst. The Lord's here, and uh, He's in the midst where you are as well, and we're so thankful for all of you. Appreciate uh, the special singing, appreciate Sister Kristen, Sister Trish, and Brother Tom, uh, and uh, appreciate everyone who's uh, working so hard to do everything online. Uh, the, uh, both the Sunday schools, the Bible studies, uh, as well as the worship services. Appreciate everyone uh, for uh, our working in that and providing those opportunities for us. Uh, some uh, prayer requests to share with everyone and um, do have a couple of praises to share. We uh, sent out an uh, uh, update yesterday afternoon, but Sister Jenny Hagee and Sister Pat Hensley were both able to come home from the hospital yesterday, and we are so thankful for that. Uh, they are both doing better, and, uh, but continue to pray for them. Also, uh, Sister Carol Horn, whom we were praying for, uh, she is also feeling better, doing better from her pneumonia. Uh, do be remembering in our prayers today the Butcher family uh, and the loss of their loved one. Uh, they uh, continue to pray for the family of Ben Looney, 
uh, continue to pray for them. A two-year-old child sent to Knoxville with a, a low white blood cell count, uh, pray for them. Also be in prayer for the family of uh, uh, Sister Adeline Woods um, who passed away. And uh, we worked with uh, Adeline many, many years, just a sweet, sweet lady. And so uh, pray for all of their family. Uh, Sister Lynn Wilburn uh, was taken to the Bristol Hospital and uh, uh, from Taswell. So continue to pray for her um, internal bleedings, what she was suffering from. Uh, Jessica Hagee continued to pray uh, for her. Uh, Tina uh, Batum, um, this is, uh, uh, they were, she was expecting a child and the baby was born. And we're so thankful for that but continue to pray for them and congratulations uh, to, uh, to them on the arrival uh, of their child. Uh, do be in prayer, of course, for our, our leadership as they make decisions in regards to uh, the next steps to take for uh, the coronavirus and pray for one another. Uh, folks, we can never get enough prayer uh, and God uh, intervenes because of prayer. Sometimes He changes the circumstances Sometimes he changes people. Uh, and certainly uh, uh, God, beloved, uh, has all things in his control. And aren't we glad? God made the worlds. He makes everything continue to function as he made it. And folks, uh, there's nothing too hard for the Lord. And so let's just continue to pray in regards to these situations. Uh, continue to hold on to the Lord. And he'll give us the strength for each day. So let's bow our heads in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, God, we're thankful for the day you've given to us. We're thankful, Father, that uh, before we ever bring our needs to you, you already know them, and we're so thankful for that. But Father, it's, it's good for us uh, that we be able to bring our needs to you. Uh, Father, we all need somebody to talk to. And Father, we know that your ears are always open to the prayers of your children. And Father, today we come just asking your special blessing, Father, upon these needs that have been mentioned today. We praise you uh, for the healing uh, that uh, Sister Jenny and Sister Pat uh, are receiving. We pray your continued blessing upon them. Father, for uh, the uh, newborns, we pray that you would continue to watch over them, bless their parents. And Father, we uh, pray for uh, those that are brokenhearted this day. Father, we, we know that you truly understand the depth of our sorrows. And Father, we humbly pray that you would just continue to comfort the, the Butcher family and the Woods family and so many others, Father, uh, that have lost their loved ones just this week. And Father, we pray for your strength uh, to be with them. Father, pray for the leaders of our country, our local leaders as well, national leaders, Father, give them wisdom. May they seek your will in all things. And Father, may they seek your wisdom uh, to make the decisions uh, that uh, are best and needed. And Father, we pray for one another. Pray for our church family, Father. Even though we're scattered out uh, throughout the area and many throughout the country, Father, we know that you are with us. You never leave nor forsake us. And Father, we know that you brought us all this way and you'll continue to do so because you're faithful. You never change. And Father, we can always depend upon you. Help us, Father, uh, to hold on to you just a little bit tighter. Walk closer to you. And Father, we pray that you'll continue to bless us as we worship together today. May your name be praised and may our hearts be strengthened by your word. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
It says that he took a cup and when he given thanks, he said, Take this and divide them among yourselves. For I tell you that from now on I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. In verse 19, this is what I want you to grab hold of. And he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body which is given for you. You do this and remember to me. And likewise, the cup after the they had eaten, saying, This cup is that is poured out for you. It's a new covenant in my blood. How many times do we read that and we don't focus on that little section that said that Jesus gave thanks? Now the Gospels are very carefully written books. They only include details that have eternal matter in mind. Why does it matter that Jesus gave thanks? show that he, like all good Jews, prayed before eating. Uh, I think it's much more than that. It's a lot deeper than that. You see, Jesus gave thanks for what he was about to do <clears throat> and what he was about to do, which was his own death, his own sacrifice. I don't know about you, but I give thanks for uh, what I like a lot. And I like a good meal. I don't think that if I was about to be hung on a cross that I'd be in a very thankful mood out of I can imagine being willing, but that's the limit of my imagination. I can't even imagine being grateful as Jesus was. Why was Jesus grateful for his own crucifixion? He did it because it was the will of his Father. It was necessary for our good, for us to enter the kingdom, for us to be forgiven. Jesus knew that it was worth it. The New Testament teaches that we've been saved to become like Jesus. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 1 and 2 says, Therefore be imitators of God as beloved children, and walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. We are saved to walk in love for each other, to be sacrifices for each other, and ultimately to be grateful that God has given us the opportunity to sacrifice for each other. For all who are in need. You know, this is not an easy thing. And it wasn't easy for Jesus to you know as he prayed in the garden of the But he did. He is our example. As we take this prayer, let's recall not only the sacrifice body of Jesus, but that he gave thanks for this sacrifice, knowing that it would lead to the salvation of untold millions of people who would also sacrifice themselves. For others, great. Let us have prayer for being in service this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this time as we meet around this table. As we read about your son Jesus Christ and the love that he had and the thanks that he had for what he was about to do, Father. Father, we know just now as, uh, as we look at these animals, we're taken back uh, to the cross and the uh, have your word to go by. We know the path that he took to get there, the brutality of it. But Father, under, uh, over all of it, the grace and the love that you have for your people just comes through in your Son Jesus Christ and this morning. Let us clear our hearts and minds and let us, as we partake of the bread, let us remember Jesus' precious body and that great sacrifice. Let us remember that the precious blood that flowed on the ground and on the cross, Father. That, Father, we know that we said you want to turn to your gospel. We know that it will cover the sin in our life. Because we know he was the perfect lamb of God. And he took on the sin of the world. Let us remember that we can use the music and pray this Father, we thank you for the For I received the Lord, and which also I bear unto you, that the Lord Jesus the same night in which he was betrayed to bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Hey, eat. This is my body which is broken for you. This do when you remember to me. Remember this precious body. After the same manner also, he took the cup when he supped, saying, 
This cup is New Testament, my blood. This tea is often you drink. Again, we do uh, greatly appreciate everyone for uh, tuning in today and um, thankful that God allows us to be together. And uh, <clears throat> we're looking forward to the time that when the uh, uh, President's mandate uh, is lifted and uh, more than 10 of us can be together at a time. Uh, but uh, due to the crises uh, with the, uh, the virus and the pandemic, uh, certainly, uh, uh, we need to uh, keep ourselves safe and healthy. But we can join together like we are today. We appreciate all of you. And uh, uh, our message today uh, is uh, uh, something prayerfully that will help us uh, to strengthen us in our Christian life. It's a familiar text, Matthew chapter 5, and verses 14 through 16. Jesus is speaking here to the multitudes in his Sermon on the Mount. And the Bible says, you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. I'm going to be studying for a moment or two about being a light for Jesus. And you know, beloved, uh, as you and I think uh, about light, we know that light shines the brightest in the darkest of places. And certainly uh, in the times in which we live uh, and the uncertain times that we're experiencing, uh, each of us have a great opportunity before us to be a light for Jesus. Uh, as you and I think about lights, there are many different kinds of lights, aren't there? From the heavens above us to the, to the earth in which we live, there are many different types of and many different sources of light. For example, uh, if you and I uh, go outside and, uh, and on a clear day and we look up into the sky, well, we will see a, a bright, shining light called the sun that, that sheds its light upon the earth. Or if we go outside a, a night like last night when it was clear, you can look up and see small uh, glowing lights called stars. And these at times seem to uh, shed forth beams of light on various objects around us. Or if we look into our own daily lives, all of us can see uh, many different uh, types or kinds of man-made lights. There's, there's flashlights, spotlights, uh, there are lighthouses, and the list can go on. All different forms and types of lights. Now, as you and I think about all these sources of light that, that we have already mentioned, we will quickly notice that there's a common thread that binds all of these sources of light together. Uh, and this common thread is this, that all these sources of light, they were created and designed for the specific purpose of shedding forth light on things around us so that we can see everything more clearly. Now, with that thought in mind, uh, let's come back to the lesson text. Jesus here in Matthew in chapter 5 in this famous Sermon on the Mount, uh, he tells the people and he tells us uh, in verse 14, he says, you are the light of the world. As Christians, you and I are a light in a very, very dark world. And then he said in verse 16, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. And what he's saying to us is that each of us are to be living examples of Christ in a lost and dying world. So very quickly today, let's just look at some thoughts 
uh, about being a shining light for Jesus uh, that prayerfully will persuade us, challenge us, and encourage us uh, to be that shining light for Jesus, to live our lives in such a way uh, so that the world will see Jesus living in us and that they in turn will desire to have the light of Jesus in their life as well. And so the first thought we consider about being a shining light for the Lord is this, the priority uh, to being a shining light for Jesus. Uh, why should you and I put so much effort in? Why should you and I focus so much attention upon being a, a shining light for Jesus? Why is being a shining light for Jesus important? Well, if we read Peter's words in 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 9, he begins to reveal to us why it's so important that we be a shining light for Jesus. He said, but you are a chosen generation a royal priesthood and holy nation, a peculiar people that you should show forth the praises of him who have called you out of darkness, notice this, into his marvelous light. As God uses Peter to speak to these young Christians here, he wants them to realize and he wants you and me to realize that as Christians, we are God's representatives to the world. We are the children of God. And as God's children, God wants you and me to be his representative uh, to those around us. The world in which we live, beloved, is indeed filled with the darkness of sin. And, and one may say that these are very dark times in which we live. And as we said right at the beginning, uh, the light shines the brightest when it's in the darkest of places. And certainly uh, these are difficult times in which we live. But folks, in these times in which we live, the Lord wants you and me to be a shining light for him. Uh, and when the world looks at us, they must see, they need to see the light of Jesus in our life. I, I love the old song that says, let the beauty of Jesus be seen in me. And now more than any other time, beloved, you and I are to be a shining light for Jesus so that those around us might see Jesus in us and want to have the light of Jesus in them. Does that mean that, that, that you and I as Christians are perfect people? No. And folks, if we ever expect to be perfect and are to be changed people, we are to be a people that are living for the Lord. And, and, and so that when the world looks in verse 6, the Bible goes on to say, He that saith he abideth in him ought himself also to walk even as he walked. In other words, if we belong to Christ, then the lives that we live needs to match our talk. Now let's, let's try to uh, put this in perspective for a moment. The through the process of genetics, uh, characteristics from our parents are passed along to us. We may walk like our parents, talk like our parents, we may look like our parents. Or man, people who know us and know who our parents are, they, know, they can tell who we belong to. Uh, several years ago, uh, uh, quite a few years ago now, we were preaching revival at the Garden Creek Church of Christ. And, and as we were preparing to, to uh, uh, go into the building, there was a group of men over to our left. And, and they were all gathered in a circle talking with their backs to us. And, and I just said hello to them. And one of the gentlemen uh, spoke up with a loud voice. And he says, you're Ezra Smith's boy, aren't you? And I thought, oh, no, I'm in trouble now. <laughs> Uh, and I turned around, and, and this gentleman, he looked at me, and he said, uh, um, you don't know who I am, do you? I said, yeah, Brother Gene Lee. I said, you haven't changed a bit. He says, well, you have. But he says, I didn't have to turn around to know who you belong to. He said, you got your daddy's voice. You see, beloved, each of us, we bear the, the family resemblance and as Christians, shouldn't we bear the family resemblance? 
Shouldn't we, by the lives that we live, the things that we do, and, and the things that we say, shouldn't people be able to see the character of God in us? Shouldn't people be able to see the character of Jesus in us? And the answer is yes. If we're going to be a shining light for Jesus, beloved, then we must be living our lives, demonstrating the character of God in our life. Paul in Ephesians 5, 1, Brother Shannon uh, uh, referenced this in his communion meditation. He says, be therefore followers of God as dear children. The Greek text reads, be therefore imitators of God as children, beloved. What the Lord is trying to, to say to us today, that because we are the children of God, uh, we are to be living our lives, patterning our lives after the example uh, that Jesus left us. So that when the world looks at us, they can tell that God is our Father and that Jesus is an elder brother. It's a well-known fact that, that children imitate the actions of their parents and, and, and children learn by example. Oh, beloved, for you and for me to be a shining light for Jesus because we are the spiritual children of God, may each of us demonstrate the character of the Lord and God our Heavenly Father in our life by the things that we say, the things that we do, and the lives that we live. And again, that old song, uh, let the beauty of Jesus be seen in me is so wonderful. It's true that if you and I are going to be a shining light in this dark time in which we live, think about the priority. Why is it important you and I be a shining light for Jesus? Because you and I are the children of Almighty God. We are brethren of the Lord Jesus Christ. But the second thought about being a shining light for Jesus that prayerfully will persuade, challenge, and encourage us to continue to live our lives for the Lord is this. Not only the priority to being a shining light for Jesus, but, but think about the purpose. The purpose in being a shining light for Jesus. Uh, what, is the, what is the goal? Uh, now that you and I know that, that, that it, how important that it is that we be a shining light for Jesus, what is the goal that we're trying to accomplish by being a shining light for Jesus? What's the, what's the main purpose here? Well, Jesus said in Matthew 5 and verse 16, he said, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Our purpose Beloved, for being a shining light for Jesus it is so that people will bring glory to God, so that the lives that we live will bring glory to God, not to ourselves, not to ourselves. There's many that promote themselves, but folks, it's all about God. And the only reason that you and I can do anything is because God has enabled us to do it. We are the creation of God, and it's by God's grace and strength that each of us can serve God and bring glory to Him. I love the way Paul put it in Galatians chapter 2 and verse 20. He said, I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. In the life which I now live in the flesh, I live, notice, by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave Himself for me. Paul, as great a preacher of the gospel that he was, he said, the only reason I'm able to serve the Lord and do the things that, that we do for the kingdom of God is by God's indwelling power to help me. All for the glory of God. You see, beloved, every ability that we have, every skill that we have, every talent that we have, every, everything that we have was given to us from God. And, and beloved, because God has given us all of this, shouldn't you and I want to bring glory to Him? And the answer is yes. Paul, again in 1 Corinthians 10 and 31, said, Whether therefore you eat or drink or whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God. Whatever it is, Paul says, may it bring glory to God. For that's, that's the purpose. That's what our purpose is as Christians. And if we're going to be a shining light for Jesus, folks, it can't be about me or you. It's all about God. 
All of us, no doubt, have gone to a, a museum from time to time. And, uh, uh, you know, you, you see these, uh, the paintings and the sculptures and the metalwork and all this. Uh, and, and we know that uh, all of these paintings and sculptures and, uh, and different uh, works are, are designed to help us to appreciate uh, art uh, and, and skill. But, you know, it, these works of art or sculptures, their purpose is to bring glory to the one that did it. And if you notice on the sculptures or on the work of art or whatever, there is a mark or there's a signature or there is a name identifying the artist with that particular work. And that particular work will bring honor to the sculptor. Well, beloved, put that in perspective now. How about you and I? You and I are the creation of God. Think about this now. You and I are the creation of God. God made everything, beloved, and by the way, when God made everything, it was very good. That means absolutely perfect. He didn't create sin, so uh, we can just set aside that false man-made teaching. But God made everything. And, and when God made us, beloved, He made us in His image. But also, when you and I accept Christ as our Savior, we become the spiritual children of God. Now, we're all God's children by creation. But when we obey the gospel, we become the spiritual children of God. We become a new person. Paul said in 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 17, he says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And since God made us, uh, 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 not only did he make creation, make all things, made you and me in his image, God has made us a new person spiritually when we accept Christ. And, and beloved, shouldn't you and I, shouldn't it be our goal to bring glory and honor to God? It should, shouldn't it? I love the way Isaiah put it in Isaiah 43 and 7 when he says, Even everyone that is called by my name, for I have created him. Notice this. I have created him for my glory. I have formed him, yea, I have made him. God made everything, folks. And especially, God wants us to know that He makes us a new person spiritually when we obey the gospel. And because you and I enjoy this great gift from God to be a new person spiritually, shouldn't we want to be living our lives bringing glory to Him? Shouldn't we want to do everything possible to bring glory to God and point men to Him? And the answer is yes. I, I love the way Paul said it in Romans 15 and verse 6 when he said about bringing glory to God. He says that you may with one mind and one mouth glorify God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Does that mean that as Christians that you and I are perfect? No. No, but beloved, our purpose, our purpose should be to live our lives every day bringing glory and honor to God. And the greatest thing that we can do with our life is to live the Christian life, to bring glory to God. And so may each of us commit our lives that we're going to live every day bringing glory to the Lord. So two thoughts about being a shining light for Jesus. We see the priority to being a shining light for Jesus. We're, we're God's children. And, and so we should want to uh, demonstrate His character in our lives so that people will see Him living in us. But also we, we have looked at the purpose, the purpose in being a shining light for Jesus to bring glory to God. But another thought about being a shining light for Jesus to consider this morning is this. Think about the potential from being a shining light for Jesus. Now we know how important it is that we be a shining light for the Lord, and we know our purpose is to bring glory to God. But have we ever thought about the effect that we can have upon others by living a life serving Jesus. And let us ask ourselves the question, can I have an impact on the world around me? Can I have an impact upon the lives of people around me by living a life for Jesus? And the answer is absolutely yes. 
We see this in the book of Acts, chapter 16, verse 25. We'll start there uh, with the uh, uh, Paul and Silas, where they were put in prison. Uh, and um, this uh, we know is uh, the account of the conversion of the Philippian jailer. But Paul and Silas have been put in prison for preaching the gospel. And they've not just been put in prison. They've been put in the inner prison, and their feet are in stocks. But it, the Bible says this, notice, And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God. Notice, and the prisoners heard them. You notice that? I mean, they're all there in the prison. And here Paul and Silas at midnight in chains, in stocks, are singing praises to God. Then notice in verse 28, the Bible goes on to say, but Paul cried with a loud voice saying, Do thyself no harm, for we are all here. Now let's go down to verse 30 and then we'll come back. And the Bible says, And brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? As Paul and Silas are there uh, in the prison and they're praising God at midnight, and the, the uh, prisoners heard them, well, their earthquake came and violently shook the earth and the prison doors opened. And we, normally the case would be that uh, the prisoners was all, would all escape. And, and the Philippian jailer was about to take his own life. And Paul said there uh, in verse 28, Do thyself no harm, for we're all here. And then he cried, the Philippian jailer did, for a lot and sprang in and came and trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas and brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Preacher, where are you going with this? I, I don't see the effect here. Notice that Paul and Silas at midnight, they were singing and praising God. The prisoners were listening. And when that earthquake came and the cell doors flew open instead of the prisoners running out, they stayed inside. You see, Paul and Silas's life, their example, it had an effect on those prisoners because those prisoners stayed instead of trying to escape. But the greatest effect came upon the life of the Philippian jailer. And as you read there uh, in verse 30, the Bible says, And brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Paul and Silas's words, Paul and Silas's actions, Paul and Silas's whole attitude about what was going on. The old Philippian jailer could see there was something different about them. And he wanted to have what they did. Even the prisoners were affected by the example of, of Paul and Silas. You see, beloved, we must never underestimate the power of a Christian example. The times in which you and I live now seem to be a very dark time. And beloved, you and I have a great opportunity before us to be a bright shining light for Jesus. If we will continue to live for the Lord, beloved, the world's going to take note and make no mistake about this. The world watches us. They watch where we go. They watch what we do. They watch how we treat others. And they're watching us now, how we're reacting in this time of crisis. And now more than ever, it is so important for you and me to be a shining light for Jesus. We must continue to live for the Lord. We must continue to be faithful. We must continue to demonstrate Christian character in our lives. Folks, we don't know who may be listening to what we say. And we don't know who may be watching the things that we do. But rest assured of this, someone is watching us. Someone is listening to us. And especially God is watching and listening to us. And therefore, beloved, if we are going to use the opportunity that God has given us to spread the gospel, to be a shining light for the Lord, then, beloved, each of us 
have a great opportunity before us to influence those around us. We must continue to live for the Lord. 2 Timothy 1 and 5, we're given a wonderful example of the power of a Christian example in, in the life and the effect that it can have upon the lives of others. Paul writes to Timothy when he said, When I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois. You notice this? which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice, and I am persuaded that in thee also. As Paul writing to Timothy here, he, he said, I, I, I remember the, the faith that you have, and I remember the faith of your grandmother Lois, and I remember the faith of your, Eun of your mother Eunice, and now I see it in you. Here we have three generations of faith. A grandmother passed her faith along to her, her daughter, and her daughter passed her faith along to her son. And we know that Timothy, uh, beloved, became a Christian as a result of this. And he was, became a preacher of the gospel and, and he became a great helper to the Apostle Paul. That's a powerful effect of being a Christian example and of being a shining light for Jesus. You see, folks, the example that we set, the life that we live, has a powerful effect. And we can affect good or we can affect evil depending upon the life that we live. Our Christian example can make a difference in someone's soul for all eternity. Our life may be the only sermon that someone hears about Jesus. And so it is so very important that the life that we live, the example that we set, show forth the character of Jesus in all that we say, in all that we do. And by living a life for Jesus, maybe that someone will desire to have Jesus in their life too. We're given a great example of the power of effect of being a shining light for Jesus. In Acts chapter 4 and verse 13, the apostles had been arrested for preaching the gospel. And uh, after they uh, were threatened, uh, the Bible says, and in the time they had been beaten, the Bible says, now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. After threatening the disciples, <laughs> The apostles said, we're just going to keep preaching the gospel. That's basically it in a nutshell. And the leaders, these Jewish leaders, they knew that these men had been with Jesus. How did they know that? By the things that they said, by the things that they did, and by the lives that they lived. They affected those leaders. They affected Jerusalem. And they had an effect upon the world. And folks, for you and me, the potential that you and I can have, the potential effect that you and I can have upon the lives of others is endless. And we can affect this world. We can show people the light of Jesus. And now in this dark time, we have a great opportunity. Again, remember we said that a light shines the brightest in the darkest of places. We may feel like we're in a dark place, but we can be a shining light for Jesus. That's what God would have us do. And so today, beloved, may we commit our lives that we're going to be, by the grace of God, we're going to be a shining light for Jesus. So, so much so that when others look at us, they can see the light of Jesus in us. And perhaps they too will want the light of Jesus in their life. We can influence others. So three thoughts about being a shining light for Jesus that we consider very quickly. The priority to being a shining light for Jesus. We're the children of God. And because we're God's children, we're to demonstrate that character. The purpose in, in being a shining light for Jesus is to bring glory to God. And we see the potential from being a shining light for Jesus. We have the opportunity to lead people to Christ by our example uh, living for Jesus. But lastly this. Look at the prospect to become a shining light for Jesus. Who is it, beloved, that can become a shining light for Jesus? Jesus makes it very simple in Matthew 11 and 28 when he said, Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Folks, every single person 
can become a shining light for Jesus. We might think that, well, I, I, I'm, I'm too old now, or I'm, I'm too wicked, and I, I've gone too far. Oh, beloved, all of us can become a shining light for Jesus by obeying the gospel. Believe Jesus is the Son of God, repent of our sin, confess Christ as Savior, be immersed, baptized for the forgiveness of sin. And beloved, that'll put the light of the Lord in us. And God wants us to know, Jesus wants us to know that everybody is invited to become a shining light for Jesus, not a particular group over here or out there or somewhere down over yonder. The Lord, beloved, invites all of us to come and be a shining light for Jesus, and He won't turn anybody away. John 6, 37 tells us this. Jesus said, All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. What does that mean? The Lord won't turn nobody away, and aren't we glad? The Lord came to save us all. John 3, 16 and 17 tells us that. And beloved, because the Lord came to save us all, that means He wants us all. And all of us can become a shining light for Jesus. Does that mean you and I are going to be perfect? No. We should strive our best to continue to live for the Lord. And the Lord will help you and me be the servant that He wants us to be. But it's a life of growing each and every day. But the Lord wants you and me to be a shining light for Him. Preacher, how do you know this? Well, if we look at a fellow by the name of Saul, later become Paul, 1 Timothy 1, verses 12 and 13, I want you to notice what Paul says to Timothy about himself. He says, And I thank Christ Jesus our Lord, who hath enabled me, for that He counted me faithful, putting in me into the ministry. Notice this now. Paul says of himself, who was before a blasphemer and a persecutor and injurious, but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly and unbelief. In modern day terms, we might say it like this, Paul was a pretty tough customer. But you know, beloved, the Lord took old Saul and changed him into the Apostle Paul. And the Apostle Paul became one of the greatest preachers of the gospel in the world next to the Lord Jesus Christ. So let me ask you this question. If the Lord can use somebody like Paul, and he did, don't you reckon that he can use somebody like you and me too? And the answer is, Yes. Oh, yes. Don't let the devil convince you that the Lord can't use somebody like me because he can use somebody exactly like me and exactly like you. You see, the Lord invites all of us to be a shining light for him. And folks, today we pray that as Christians, we would continue to be faithful to the Lord and live for Him, be that shining light that the Lord wants us to be. And if we've never accepted Christ as Savior, then today's the day to do that. Obey the gospel. Believe Jesus is the Son of God. Repent of our sin. Confess Christ as Savior. Be immersed, baptized for the forgiveness of sin. And God will take the sin out of our life by the blood of Jesus. God, the Holy Spirit, will come to live within us. He'll light the light of Jesus in us. And then you and I can have that opportunity to go forth and shed the light of Jesus, spread the light of Jesus to a lost and dying world. The priority to be a shining light for Jesus is that we're God's children. Why do you and I want to be? Because we're God's people. And their purpose in being a shining light for Jesus is to bring glory to God. God made us. And when you and I accept Christ as Savior, He makes us a new person spiritually. And since God has done all that for us, shouldn't we want to do all that we can to bring glory to God? And the answer is yes. And the potential from being a shining light for Jesus, we can affect the lives of countless numbers of people. And folks, if the world can see Jesus in us. 
then that's going to open the door of opportunity to share the gospel of Jesus with them. And, and the, the prospect to become a, a shining light for Jesus, every one of us can. Everybody can be a shining light for Jesus if we will just come to him. Again, today, beloved, if we've never accepted Christ as Savior, why not begin your journey with the Lord today? Repent and be baptized and start living for the Lord, shining your light for Jesus wherever you go. And as Christians, let's be encouraged to keep shining our light so that the world might see Jesus living in us. Again, recount and recall that text there in Matthew 5 and verse 16 where the Lord said, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. A light shines the brightest when it's in the darkest of places. This may seem like a dark time to us, but folks, we've got the light of the Lord in us, and let's let our light shine. If we will do